Hello, my name is Eric. In this video, I will share three travel tips that I have applied on my Nova Scotia trip. Sometimes, things are too good not to be shared. There are some really nice videos on things to do in Nova Scotia, but I don't know why some gems were missed. So, as a compliment to these videos, here's what I think are Nova Scotia's unique jewels. First tip, looking for UNESCO World Heritage Sites to visit is a very good idea. I have put a link to that website in the comment section of this video. Go check what they recommend to see in your country. Joggins Fossil Cliff, this is a World Heritage Site designated by UNESCO. It is considered of outstanding value to humanity. Why not stop by? Plus, it is right at the entrance of Nova Scotia. Joggins is famous because of its fossilized rainforest ecosystem of 310 million years of age. This is much older than dinosaurs who were there between 60 to 245 million years. I was really impressed to see and touch textures of living plants or animals that were there before the prehistoric period. It felt like time travel. Those fossils are the world's finest examples of Coal Age fossils. The place has been visited since the late 1820s. There is definitely something about it. The initiated come from all around the world to see this unique place. The rainforest is fossilized on a cliff in the Bay of Fundy. When the tide goes down, it all appears. Bay of Fundy has the highest tidal range in the world. Its action undermines and sweeps away the face of the cliff, so new crops of fossils are laid open. You can even access the site by yourself or go on a guided tour. But I will not miss the interpretation center. At some point, you can hear rocks cracking and falling from the cliff and discover new fossils. When you walk along the cliff, you have to watch the cliff itself and the rocks on the ground to find those fossils. But don't forget, you leave everything on site so that others can also enjoy. You must plan your visit to be there 2 hours before and 2 hours after high tide. Second travel tip, national parks are a must. There are always parks that you don't know about and each have something wonderful to discover. So take a look at that list of national parks in the area you are planning a trip. The Fortress of Louisbourg. Here's another gem of Parks Canada. I have to say that Parks Canada is very good to highlight national treasures and at friendly prices too. This place is another time travel. This French fortress of 1713 had a key role in the colonial war between the British and the French and this up to 1758. 20% of that huge fortress was rebuilt as a living history museum. The site is the largest reconstruction project in North America. It definitely is worth a detour if you have an interest in history. If that fortress had not been lost to the British, there is some chance that Canada and part of United States could have been French. 
This stronghold was the key to siege Quebec, which is another interesting story of the French Indian War. If you want to be part of a living historical theater, that's the place. Every detail is accounted for. This old park, the reconstruction and the living history with actors representing authentic figures, is based on 750,000 pieces of archive papers. Parks Canada had a lot of documentation to set everything back and give you a real glimpse at how things were. The job is perfectly done. I think that a full day is a must for this awesome place. You will definitely learn from all the characters, not only about who they personify, but also how they did things back then. The highest tides in the world can be found in Canada's Bay of Fundy. Why not see that phenomenon in a few minutes? Plus, it is also really close to Joggins and the road entrance to Nova Scotia. A tidal bore is a wave front which moves upstream in a river announcing the arrival of an incoming tide. You can observe this phenomenon for free at different locations. Here it is at Fundy Discovery Site. The Blue Nose is a Canadian icon, an undefeated racing champion schooner sailing boat. It has been on the Canadian 10 cents since 1937. In 1963, they rebuilt an identical one. This fishing racing boat is one of the most renowned ships to visit in the world. So yes, it's worth another detour. You have to look for the schedule to know where it will be. Seeing her at its birthplace is certainly the best place to visit it. Lunenburg is the place. Lunenburg. This port town is definitely my favorite city in Nova Scotia. This place is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I will not miss it. It is pretty easy to spend the day in that beautiful place. You can walk all day and enjoy your best ever scallops right in front of the Blue Nose. The scenery is so charming that they put Lunenburg on the 100 Canadian dollars banknote from 1975 to 1990. To me, this place is more interesting than Peggy's Cove. Peggy's Cove is interesting too, but too much tarmac and facilities added. You have to choose your angles to shoot pictures without catching that modernization. I think that preserving authenticity makes a place more attractive. Having a parking lot and a visitor center outside the location would have been much better. The Titanic. If you want to see pieces of the Titanic or learn about an incredible World War I ship full of explosives that collided with another one and exploded with an extreme force that even created a tsunami, visit the Halifax Maritime Museum. They say that Nova Scotia requires 10 days to visit. I think that this time lapse is too short. There's too much to see. Also, take note that you will be surprised how seemingly small distances take in reality more time than expected. There is a lot of coastline, 13,300 km of it. If you want to enjoy Nova Scotia rather than just driving through it, two or three weeks will make it more enjoyable. Why not take the time to enjoy the Cabot Trail, all the outdoors activities, the numerous microbreweries, Halifax with its museum and the Citadel, cool boardwalks or cool restaurants. There's plenty to do all around Nova Scotia. My main purpose was surfing 
and I was really not disappointed. As said, this video was about the Marvels, the unique gems of Nova Scotia, what really stands out, what is really different and should not be missed. Don't miss the Welcome Center, it is a real nice one. Really nice people will help you find what you will personally enjoy most. I will also add that Nova Scotia is very kind and welcoming to van lifers. It is a good destination to enjoy this nomadic travel lifestyle. I invite you to my van tour video. I have added a link to it in the comment section. Give me your feedback about those gems. Have you ever thought of planning a trip using the UNESCO World Heritage site list? Are you a fan of welcome centers? I hope you have enjoyed my video. See ya!